even care that your parents look like Pokemon characters. It's gonna be hard to talk about this one because this is an episode with a lot of emotional highs and a lot of emotional lows, at least for me, but we'll get to that. This episode for most of its run is basically entirely focused on the only two plot elements that I was really interested in going into this season. Did I think it was good? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say so. I, I thought it was pretty good. But let's take things in order and talk about them in chronological order just to give this video some sort of structure. Ruby yelling at the mouse was great. It was very funny. Why are you still here? Uh, that's what I'm saying! I know the rat is probably going to do something later, but I just, like, I, I don't, I don't care. I, I want to focus on the characters. I don't want to focus on a random rat. Can we just not, with the rat, can we do something else? Can we please focus on the characters that I am actually invested in, please? Although, the rat's entire existence was worth it for this one moment in the season. Oh, for God, stomp on her. Stomp on her. Ooh. Yeah! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Best character! Best character! Time we all got what we deserve. Yeah! Oh my God, she's perfect! Funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. 10 out of 10. If the rat never comes back, best joke in the series without question. A thing I'm curious about is, I'm curious about people that didn't read the Neo book. I wonder how much they'll get out of seeing all of the pictures from her backstory. Because I've read the Neo novel myself, so I know her backstory more or less. But it's just interesting to think about. I'm curious if anybody who hasn't read the book... I'm curious to know what you got out of these paintings. I'm curious how accurate it was to the original. It was so awesome to see Roman again. He is a great character, and it was great to see him come back. Him and Neo look adorable together. The way that they compliment each other as being little shit gremlins is amazing. I am so pro everything going on right now. Oh, they're so cute! Oh, look at them! I needed infinitely more of this throughout the episode, and frankly throughout the series. I'm going to enjoy watching you break. Oh, look at her! I love her! Honestly, more than anything, I think it just highlights how lacking the remaining villains have been. Because basically, all of the interesting antagonists have either died incredibly anticlimactic deaths, or were just mishandled to the point that an anticlimactic death is really the only way the show could have dealt with them. Putting aside the fact that none of them have, like, any interesting personality traits. Well, let me rephrase. Some of them did, but, well, you know how that ended. I really dig the idea of her using her semblance to recreate all of these dead characters. <laughs> DEAD PEOPLE! Yeah! 13 Reasons Why! It's a cute way to bring back the voice actors for their roles, and I don't know. It was just cool to see all of the characters together again. I could have dealt with not seeing over half of them, but I mean, hey, I got to see Pyrrha again, and really, isn't that all that matters? And again, I have to give this episode credit. Ruby drinking the tea? Something I was genuinely not expecting. She's dead. I guess we're on Whoopi. I will give the show plus five for that. I didn't see that coming. I genuinely didn't know that that was where that would go. So, nice left turn by the writers. Obviously, an unpredictable story doesn't automatically make it good, but at the very least, it helps retain interest. A nice little detail. I like that Arthur isn't here because Neo didn't see him die. Uh, I know that's very much dabbling with faint praise, but... Hey, a lesser writer would have forgotten about that, so I appreciate that someone on the staff remembered. These are the depths I dive to in order to find positives in things. Honestly, it's pretty hilarious that I was mostly rooting for Neo this season. Neo should win. Yay, Neo wins! Also, nobody stopped her, even though they had a good opportunity to. I've laid my cards on the table from the beginning. I think Neo is one of the best characters in this series. 
I think her design is really cool. I think her power is really cool. I think she had a really interesting story going on. There was really something there. There was a lot of potential that could be tapped for this character. And unlike a lot of other characters in this series where I feel like they don't tap into that potential, I felt like they kind of did with Neo. I died in Atlas, too. You died twice, Petty. You're not special. I was rooting for Neo to win. And she did. It was great. But unfortunately, that leads to the low part of the episode. Well, first off, the curious cat came back. Oh, God damn it! So, I guess him running away in the previous episode was him lying because he wanted Ruby to mentally break so that he could steal her heart. I mean, couldn't he have just taken John? He seemed pretty bent out of shape. He could have just burned the paper people to death and then just taken his heart or whatever. I mean, it looked like he could do it pretty easily. I, I, I don't, whatever, who cares? And of course, that leads to the saddest part of the episode and probably the saddest moment in Ruby history. Neo gets taken over by the curious cat. Can't even accept your own futility. God damn it. No, no, no. It, it, it's entirely possible that Neo is fine. Maybe when they take the cat out of Neo, they'll they'll keep her they'll they'll keep her alive and she'll be fine, right? Like they like they can't kill her off, right? Like they just they cannot they they can't kill off the best character in the show. They just can't do that. that no, so don't take Neo. Mind. No. No! She's the best character in the show! No! Don't come in on me, huh? No! This upset me way more than it should. I, I just- I just cannot believe that they would do that. Why would they do that? Why would they do this to her? Why would they do this to the best character in the show? Couldn't the curious cat have taken John? Or Ruby? Or- Fucking Blake, I don't know, just anybody, not Neo. Don't do it to her. And now you have nothing left. No, no, I will have no, nothing dude, left. I when I said I wanted character development, this is not what I meant. But I thought- Yeah, you, you know what? You thought wrong. Trick. Okay, I, I'm just- you know what? I, I can't talk. I can't even talk about it anymore because I'm just going to uh, it's just going to upset me more. So we're not we're not going to talk about it anymore. I'm just we're, 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 we're tabling the discussion. Anyways, episode eight. Overall, I'm enjoying this one, too. I've overall, at least I've been enjoying it. The ramifications of it, I'm hoping are minimal, at least in regards to certain people. I am interested to see what will happen next. I'm. Shocked I'm saying that too. When this season started, I felt like I was not going to get any more invested than I was, but here I am. I'm kind of interested to see what will happen next. It's surprising. All that's left now is to see where this goes, and I guess we'll see together. I heard there was a secret choir that David played and pleased the Lord, but I didn't. No, really, do you care for the music, do you? I pose like this, a fourth, a fifth, a major fall, a major lift. 